there is in this sport especially and in, and even in life there's there's so much information we take it a lot as fact and we take it as one size fits all you know and that there this is it for everybody this is how it should be for everybody and the fact that it's just like i mean even just like on, on, on an individual level every single day is different Today is March 29th, 2018, and this is the 150th episode of the Crushing Iron Triathlon Podcast. Pause, insert clapping. <laughs> Serious golf clap on that 150. Yes, the slow, the slow 150 golf clap. Uh, that was more of a 13th or 14th hole. Uh, par three, but hey, I think it's what we deserve. Yeah, the slow burn, man. It's <laughs> the slow burn and the yeah, and the slow clap. <laughs> we've been slow burning for about I don't even know now. I mean, we've been doing this podcast so long, yeah, a year that, and a half, yeah, so long for twenty years at least. <laughs> well, that's like dog years now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, podcast years. years, dog. How do you think those relate? I don't know. I mean, the podcast is... I don't know if it's a, the grind of a dog's life, but... Yeah, because their life's so tough. Mine's sleeping <laughs> on the couch right now. It's yeah, like let's, the most let's investigate that, that again. All day. <laughs> like, it's like seven years. Most... Yeah, Maddie's... My dog is just... She's got her own bed, and she's been laying around a lot lately. Yeah. Why is, how, old is, how old is Maddie? She's about seven. Right, yeah, Kona's five. She's uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh man, I hope not. That saint's really old. She's getting to be about my age. Man, she's getting up there. <laughs> but why? I mean, I guess they. Eat I don't know. Weird stuff. And yeah, somebody else can tell us that. Yeah. Um, boy, it is a rainy, nasty spring day here in Nashville. But wherever you are across the country or as we talked before, anywhere in the world or the universe. We hope you're having a fantastic day, and we appreciate you taking the time to join us and spend uh, between 45 and 60 minutes of your day with Mike and I. Uh, and we hope that we are able to help you in any way, shape, or form. And uh, if we do help you, or even don't help you, please feel free, and we encourage you to leave us a review on iTunes. They're incredibly helpful, as you know. Uh, we've been harping on those a lot here the last month or two, but they are—they're very, very helpful, and they've—they've they've proven to um, definitely assist us in reaching a, a wider audience. And if we're—if we're really serious about helping others get into the sport of triathlon and be informed and, and help them with clarity in terms of training and approach and mindset, then uh, hey, sharing is caring. And uh, you don't have to directly share our podcast, even though we do encourage it on Facebook, Twitter, or uh, Snap, Tinder, whatever one of your social media outlets you use. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, it is that that's time of year. That's my favorite. That's that is your, favorite. I know, that's your favorite, yeah, uh, is uh, to share and uh, let others know. And we hope that it's good information. And if you do like it, again, leave us a review and then feel free to share it with your friends or in some of your closed uh, circles because I, uh, I'll probably actually cut out some of this email. Uh, but it's not, it's not a review, but we do. We get emails a lot from awesome athletes talking about the podcast and their background. And so uh, without, obviously, we always do them anonymously, but without divulging this person's uh, identity, I wanted to, to give um, just a little reading, if you don't mind. A little reading reading it's actually kind of long but it's a it's a little we'll call it a little reading um i'll be here yeah uh from one of our awesome listeners a friend talked me into going to the madison ironman the finish line to watch his wife cross six years ago and as you know madison is electric uh which you and i both know uh i wanted that it took me three years to get the bike wetsuit and to lose 65 pounds my old quote-unquote race bike was a 79 Schwinn Varsity weighing, wow. in at, weighing in at 48 pounds. So I had to get something newer. When I started back on a bike six years ago, our family was going through hell that you would not believe. 
one day I decided enough was enough. I needed to start to lose weight. At that point, I was 300 plus pounds. I crashed my mountain bike bad enough to crack ribs and crack my helmet in half. At that point, a great friend stopped by the house to check on our family. He gave me a hug and jokingly said, you know, you will not get that hurt if you take up running. Uh, it took almost two months to be able to move better, two months of thinking about trying to run. I bought a cheap pair of running shoes and loved it. Uh, on the trails the next few months, I fought demons that no psychologist could help and kicked their asses. That was then. This is now. Now I want to see what my oldish body can do. I will do a 70.3 this year and a very good chance I will take on Ironman Wisconsin in 2019. I love listening to your podcast. They've helped so much. There's so much to learn. I work a 12-hour shift, and so twice a week, as soon as I get the newest podcast over, over the speakers, it's on. Keep up the great work. Your podcasts have kept me going and taught me a ton. It might sound odd, but one of the biggest things is it's okay to, to-, to have totally shitty training days. Plow through them and love the good days. When I first started training for Ironman and before I found your podcast, a crappy training day would truly have gotten to me for the rest of the week. I, cannot, I could not have a bad day uh, in training for Ironman. Ironman does not have to be uh, consumed with bad days. And little did I know, even people who do Ironman actually have shitty days. And until listening to you, I didn't even know it was okay. 73, 73 days out for Madison 70.3, and I cannot wait. Thank you for everything. Wow. You're welcome. Thanks for You're writing welcome. in. That's awesome. I'll, I'll forward it to you, too, so you can have, uh, you can have the person. But, um, you yeah, know, we got a Facebook post similar to that, you know, about the, the you know, bad training days and, and how that can overwhelm you. Yeah, it, it's, it's just funny, you know, and I don't know why it's, it's so shocking, um to me to hear you know but i guess in again and like in the day and age we live in like you know you don't take uh you don't take a selfie with your granola bar and your apple and put it on instagram filter with hashtag healthy food hashtag foodie uh you put like some like duck confit with butternut squash and a glass of red wine uh, and act like that's what you eat every meal um, but you know, it's, it's and the same thing with all social media is, you know, you always highlight the good days and you like to, you know, you pretend like, you know, every other day, every day is like that. And you never talk about or acknowledge or that we all just have super crappy days. And it's the same with training, you know, training is life and we all have crappy days and you can't let it consume you, uh, and, and just let it steamroll. You know, you can't just like, just like, you know, taking a, a day, needing to t- needing to take a day off. There's nothing wrong with it. But when needing needing to take a day off turns into two days and three days in a week, and then a two weeks, and then that's when it becomes, you know, uh, something you want to address or or um, you know, really heed your own advice. And so, um, but yeah, it's a uh, it is. We do we all we all have bad training days. It's they're not all going to be perfect, and if they are you're you know i don't think you're going about it the right way so it's uh it's a lot to learn but again just like there's so much information out there which is one of the reasons why we you know started doing this podcast um not only is there so much information but there's so little transparency about how about the reality of the sport uh and that you think that you have to be this or you have to have that or all your training days are going to be PRs. And so you get into that mindset and you have those expectations and then you beat yourself up when you don't. And so I think it's, I do, I think it's just refreshing to hear, uh, you know, the, re- the reality from, you know, um, hopefully, you know, two athletes like you and I that aren't trying to promote ourselves as perfect who always have everything lined up because we don't. We, we, have, we have answers to very little, <laughs> you and I, but we have a ton of experience. And I think that's ultimately what you and I try to share is, is we want to share our experience and our lessons with our listeners so that they hopefully don't repeat them. Or if they do, then at least they know that it's not just them. And I think that's, that's one of the biggest things in just life in general is it's not just me. You know, it's not only me. Other people go through this stuff too. Yeah. The, 
highs and the lows, man. I mean, that's sort of... Uh, I think if we kind of really looked inside and, you know, had to come up with one reason maybe why we we started this podcast or what the biggest thing with us is, I think that might be it, too, you know, in a way, the um, the idea that, you know, we want to figure out this whole thing, like, why we... You know, it's how do we get level, I guess is what mm-hmm. I'm getting at. You know, because that has been stuff we've struggled with, you know, by our personalities forever. And I think that more and more people struggle with it. We, you know, you kind of touched on social media and just the nature of uh, society today and how fast things move and how, uh, you know, I, not, not the fake news thing, but just the fake imagery that seems to be kind of proliferating through the our heads every day and what the stuff we see and you know on the same in the same coin there is a lot of uh kind of blatantly honest really i mean you know if you look back uh the, the stuff that used to be like secrets in people would we'd never hear about that stuff but i think more and more people are just kind of laying it on the line these days which is kind of cool too it's like hey i'm mm-hmm. out here suffering and and you can find uh you know videos and i was actually looking for some of that stuff last night and i you know it's kind of like i was framing it in my head as i'm looking for something real you know like mm. to quote r kelly i wanted some real talk <laughs> and uh um and i was just kind of looking around and it's cool because that stuff is out there and i think that is what our podcast is based on um the you know the real side of uh triathlon and it's awesome and it can suck and it's sort of just like life you know and uh and I think I think just having this conversation floating around every twice a week is is good, you know. I think that I hope that a lot of people see that that you know just because we're not sitting here rattling off you know the ten best ways to you know set up your transition. So yeah, I'm hoping that you know just the conversation in general that we have in this podcast touches a lot of people and hits the heart because I think we're all at the core just trying to you know be better people and happier and healthier people and this isn't necessarily just about tips and pointers all across the board for triathlon you know yeah i know i i I totally agree with you i think that you know one of the sometimes one of the hardest things to like differentiate between is like so much information and then or or i guess the difference in information and experience because I think a lot of people there there is in this sport especially and in, and even in life there's there's so much information we take it a lot as as fact and we take it as one size fits all you know and that there this is it for everybody this is how it should be for everybody and the fact that it's just like I mean even just like on an, on an individual level every single day is different <laughs> you know every hour is different and then you just add in like other people's lives and everything about them is different and their life circumstances are different and their experience is different i mean i mean i get to see it you know from a unique point of view in the fact that i deal with you know athletes you know old young male female parents not parents have kids you know don't have kids um all different experience levels, all different life stress. And it's like you just you see everything. And to think that that one size fits all or, or one, you know, approach fits everyone or even one training plan fits everyone. It's just that's why it's so difficult is that there are so many – life has so many moving parts, so many on a day-to-day basis. Um, and you always have to be willing to adapt. And then you you take life – you know, listen. The greatest multi-sport in the world is just life in general. <laughs> like, <laughs> how many things? You, how many things you have to juggle each day and adapt to, and do this and do that. It's just you just got to make shit work, and then you apply basically four more sports to it: swimming, cycling, running, putting them all together to make one sport in, in triathlon. And then you add nutrition, and then you add recovery. And it's like, how many more things? Like. Every day you wake up and you're handed in a Rubik's cube. Yeah, no kidding. And then it's your, it, 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 and that's what it feels like. And then you, it's your job to like integrate and twist and turn and manipulate like all these things. So maybe when the day is over, I can at least like have a decent looking cube. 
<laughs> you know, in most days, it's just not. It's going to look like a total cluster. And then some days you're going to be like, you know what? F it. I'm just going to toss this out the window. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then you see, and then you see these videos of like these dudes that can blindfold themselves and do a Rubik's cube without looking. And you're like, oh, well, see, it should just be that easy, right? You know, and it's just, it is. It's just, it's so difficult. And, and that's the most important thing is just to share experiences and and with experience you get to gather your own information about your own life and your own training and how things should should really go and and yeah i think that's that's ultimately what and hopefully you know and i think we have you know on on many levels and we'll always try to do better but that is what we want with this podcast is to share our experiences so you can have additional information from us through us and our experiences to hope make you make hopefully better decisions or just understand that listen life is an instagram you know it's just how it is so uh you know i guess an example would be like the you know i was texting you when uh we were texting back and forth after UT lost that heartbreaking March Madness game in the last second to Loyola. And uh, in the past, I'd have been like sitting on the couch and just sulking for, for, for a while and just, you know, talking about the game. And five minutes later, what was I doing? I was upstairs with no TV on changing a poopy diaper. Like, yeah. that's life. Like, it's just, that's just how it is. It's the real world. But uh, yeah, I think that, again, hopefully we've done that over these last 150 podcasts and and i know we'll definitely try our hardest to continue to do so yeah i mean that's like um i don't know it just comes down to you know taking care of what you can control i mean really if what are you going to do about that ut loss i mean it's just like sometimes i think about that you know um sometimes we get really deflated when our team loses and it's like we uh, you know i can't speak for everybody but i all of a sudden go into mode of like all right what do we need to do next what do we and that we, we can't do anything about it you know what i mean i can't mm-hmm. do anything about recruiting i can't do anything about anything but i let it fester in my brain and i think a lot of times that that in general is what happens to us because there's so much out there that seems like maybe it's in our control What's that? Uh, the, it's sort of on that like serenity prayer thing. It's like we get con- you know confused as to what we can control and what we can't, and that becomes sort of the sticking point of uh, or the yep. confusion point, I guess, of life. Is like you know uh, we kind of try to go down all these roads, and there's so many options, there's so many things, anything's possible. And then, you know, it just becomes overwhelming. But the reality is, is when you sit back and just do what's in front of you, that's really what's possible. And uh, I don't know, I was thinking, you know, because I've been really bike heavy lately. And, uh, you know, that's that's another like 30, uh, it's not a secret, but, you know, the whole thing about triathlon is three sports, right? And you said like four, nutrition and recovery is five and whatever, but it's balancing all that stuff out, man, because that's becomes a huge part of stress for me is like, man, my swim's fading off or my run's falling apart. So like, you know, my bike is, kind of, I've been really kind of in a, in a weird way. It's sort of like your re-love of swimming, you know, because biking's probably my best back story in this sport. Um, mm-hmm. And it's probably my strength and my most natural talent. Uh, but I've been kind of having finding a, a little bit of a relove for my old biking days, and uh, so I've been riding a lot, and I think that's great. Um, but then I am like, well, my run's falling down a little bit, so what do I do? I go out and I'm I'm feeling pretty good, and then I just sort of like, man, I got to pick this thing up, and I got to like get it all back today, you know? I mean, <laughs> it's like instead of being patient with it and and then that of course throws everything else out of whack and it makes me start not liking biking again because i've overran and um and i know you're a big proponent of of being careful with the run right so yeah i mean it's yeah consistency and frequency it's and not not day in and day out running hard in track sessions yeah it's it's you got to be it's it's the one of all three that you have to be really careful with building because it can it can lead to you know you're never going you know rarely you know especially from like the waist down like you're never gonna be like oh well if you ever get injured in triathlon more times than not it's like yeah you can't run but you can swim and bike 
<laughs> you know, because it's always like something kind of a lower extremity injury. Mm-hmm. It's never, oh yeah, you can run, but you can't bike or swim. <laughs> you know, and so yeah, it's it's just by the load, not just the load and the fact that it's a t- it's 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 swimming on concrete. Oh. <laughs> you know, swim, it, it's, <laughs> I like swim, that. It is swimming is full body. Swimming, you use your arms, your legs, your core, everything. Um, running is the same, but you are uh, hitting and pounding and pushing off of concrete and asphalt or trail or whatever. Whereas obviously swimming, you're basically doing it in space, uh, and you have water. And so, like, if you switch those, one would be one would be better. That's why when you put people in the water for awkward jogging, totally different story, obviously. So yeah, it's you have to be. You just have to be careful, and you have to take time. And I and I get questions about it all the time from from listeners or, or people in the Facebook group or even athletes. It's like, why am I not running more? And or not, no, not more because they're they'll be they can be running like four or five times a week. But like, well, you know, my long run is is only this. And and the thing is that like, and you'll hear a lot of of athletes or uh, of coaches say this. Your once you get into where your long run is more than thirty percent or a thirty five percent is like the max a thirty five percent and I would I would even say thirty percent is the highest if your long run is more than thirty percent of your weekly volume then you're getting into pretty fine territory for being more susceptible for injury mm-hmm. but uh, we don't think of it that way. You know, in that, I mean, and there's a there's a there's a very easy plan you can follow up there called the Barry P plan, the Barry P plan, where the, your long run every week is only thirty percent always of your weekly volume, and you and you inch your way up with only ten percent increases each week. It's a great plan. It's great for people to use if they're self coaching. Uh, you have to be very patient with it. But then again, that's why <laughs> you have to be patient because you have to be careful. But you know, you think, oh, why am I not doing three hour runs? Well, because I guarantee you, if you're doing a three-hour run in the middle of the week, then I bet you you only have like four and a half hours of running for the whole week. And so you're looking at doing over 50% of volume in one run versus the reality is if you're doing it smart, your two and a half, two and a half hour run is a lot of my athletes max. But then again, like they may be running eight hours a week. That's a lot of running. You're getting up into like the 50 to 60 mile a week range, but we're not doing it in one run. Mm-hmm. We're doing it frequently, and that's where you just have to be really, really careful and safe with with everything. Just especially with with running, you know, more. You will rarely have an athlete say, "Yeah, swimming just ruined my triathlon career," <laughs> or "Cycling just ruined my, my cycling injury just ruined my triathlon career." It's more oftentimes, you know, the broken foot or the broken, you know, whatever it is from from running too hard or, or Achilles or whatever it is. And it more oftentimes than not comes from running. Yeah. My point being on that, that I went out running and tried to re-get it. That, that's when I lose my why, right? It's because my why becomes, man, I got to train. I got to get my run up because I need to get this time. And what happens is uh, I lose track of this idea of doing triathlon to feel better and to be in balance and in better shape and to be able to tackle life better. Um, that's where I get, and I think I'm not alone in this, um, that people will overrun or you know overtrain in general on certain areas because they're, they're getting out of their comfort zone. You know, it's like you're saying, you know, some people can comfortably run 50, 60 miles a week, you know, but they have not done that overnight. You know what I mean? I mean, I just feel mm-hmm. like the whole... Yep. Uh, that's years of building. That's years of doing the right things after your runs. That's years of you know doing the right things before your runs. It's years of good sleep or whatever the case may be, and building your body up to that level. Um, it just uh, I don't know. My thought is if you're gonna go, I've seen it many times. You know, I've I've experienced it many times where I haven't um, done that quote unquote confidence run for. 20 miles or 22 miles just to prove that i could go that far you know um it it it's not necessary and i think that we get out of whack in the balance of our training um to keep these things you know 
in 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 the right proportions to our shape at the time. <laughs> it's like yeah. To me, that's where the injury comes from too. It's like you feel good one day, and it's like I always go back to this. You know, exercise is supposed to give you energy, not take it away. And I am the you know the culprit. It, you're 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 cutting. Yeah. Hello. Now, uh, did you lose me? There you are. There I am. You were responding. I, I didn't hear anything. Oh, you didn't. Yeah. In case your in case this part doesn't get edited, my uh, the, my, the power went out in my entire neighborhood. So I am working uh, in the middle of our podcast. So I'm currently working off a Wi-Fi hotspot. So uh, it's probably going to cost me a lot. So hey, if you want to do any podcast pledges, hit us up on the website today to help cover uh, this incredibly expensive podcast. Um, no kidding. But uh, yeah, but. Um, uh, oh, you're talking about yeah, your energy and and you're the the being the culprit of it, and there's like being able to be fluid with your actual with reality and expectations and circumstances is just so effing hard. <laughs> but like there, but I do think there is something to be said, and and I've been I was thinking about that actually last night I think. In this morning, as I kind of rechecked, as we always do, the weather for an upcoming race, and uh, and the current outlook for Galveston now is uh, 81 with a real feel of 94. Nice. Uh, with <laughs> and which is going to be just insane. And I mean, I feel like I'm prepared heat wise, but I'm just going to have to do even more. I think the next few weeks. But going back to like when you and I did Louisville. Oh, three and a half years ago, the last Louisville 1.0, the real Ironman Louisville, uh, in August, that it was so hot, you just had to basically erase expectations or time goals. It was one was survive, and number two was finish. And number three was try to survive finishing as fast as possible. And that was like the order of of the day. It wasn't, all right, I'm just going to go crush this. It was just you had to play it so smart and so reserved. It was about that and not about – it was about every minute, not about the last minute. And that's so oftentimes how we look at training and racing is we obsess about the last minute. What's the clock going to say in that last second or minute when I cross the finish line? And I was like thinking about Texas and like, yeah, you know, I have expectations and because we're always going to. And then, but ultimately it's like, man, if it's going to be 81 with a real feel in the nineties, shit, my number one goal is to be smarter than everybody else. <laughs> that's that's the best I can do is to execute my plan and play be as smart as I possibly can and just try and execute better uh, and keep my ego in check better than the other dudes in my age group. Because listen, if you know any guys 35, 39, you know we got egos the size of the Goodyear blimp. And more often times than not, especially on a flat course like Galveston, they just want to blow their load and burn their biscuits on the bike. And so I, so I just, there's, there's something to be said for that, like for removing that stress of expectation to a, to a focus of execution, removing the expectation and focusing now on the execution, which is all we should do anyway. But, you know, when you, when you talked about like going out for different workouts and wine, you know, not trying to have hero workouts or, you know, make them give you good energy and not take it away and like realize where you actually are in the moment, you know, and, and we talked about it on multiple podcasts before. It's like one of the biggest things I go through with athletes when I first start working with with them if they come off a layoff or off an injury or whatever. It's like the best thing that you can do right now is accept where you are and not try to work out as if you are where you want to be. Because we do it we do it so often. <laughs> we do it in we do it in training, we do it in races like, yeah, but I want to be this like I want to I want to I want to do this swim and I want to average this mile per hour and this wattage on the bike and I want to run this pace on the run. And and be damned if it's going to be 90 degrees. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I'm still going to I'm still going to do it. And then, of course, like mile four of the run, you're walking. You're like, God, that was the dumbest thing I've ever done. And so when you can shift that mindset and just be realistic and objective, which, again, 
is hard. <laughs> like we're not we're not telling you it's easy. It should be, but it's not. Then that's you know that's when things can really benefit you. And when you the the athletes who raced who race the best in conditions like Kona or uh, probably the race we're going to have this in this next weekend. They are so many more times. Ju- they're, they're just smarter, and they're just they're also prepared, and they're also in incredibly good shape. But they also they're also able to kind of disassociate from a- an expectation of being in like the heat of battle. To if I don't kind of get it's it's kind of like when you you kind of sit back and you watch other people kind of beat themselves up and then you kind of like walk your way in and like you have the last man standing and they're already kind of beat and you know beaten down and weak and feeble <laughs> and you're like i've just been sitting in the corner man watching you guys go at it i'm just going to kind of swoop in and and be the hero of the day mm-hmm. a lot of times a lot of times that that's that's training and racing is you you want to be in the back not the back but you you just want to know you want to have that feeling of i see you going by me but I know that I'm going where I'm, I, I'm pushing, I'm doing my game plan, I'm executing my race, and I'm and you know what? When it's that hot, you really try to take it even maybe just a little bit easier because mm-hmm. you think when you're dying on the run, I can't wait to run past you, and it's just I got to be smarter for you longer, and hopefully that'll end up winning the day. And so yeah, you just you just have to again. It's it's execution over expectation, and and yes, it's not it's not easy. It is definitely hard, but what, uh, I think there's something to it. Yeah. What part of our brain makes us think that? Oh, let's just say it's a full Ironman. It at uh, the I don't know three hours into a twelve hour day that if somebody passes us, we can't let that happen. <laughs> at that point, you know what I mean, like <laughs> or. Or like coming out of the T uh, two and you're out on the run, you're like a mile into a marathon, and then all of a sudden, it's like I gotta keep up with that person, mm-hmm. and yep. and you start letting it's them ego, dictate man. your race. It's I mean, like ego. it's incredible how ridiculous that is. But I know that feeling you're talking about is when you're sort of laying in the weeds and you're feeling good. You know, it's like all right, I'm managing this energy load right now, and I'm managing how I feel and I know I've got a bunch left rather than going out and then hoping that you're going to have a bunch left. Yep. Because, I mean, it's like, what was that saying? We always say it's sort of like uh, nobody ever finishes a race and says, man, I wish I would have put more, like a full Ironman. How many people like wish they would have put more effort in, you know? (laughs) Yeah. It's like it never, any, any triathlon for that matter. I mean, everybody talks about, you know, leave it all on the course. Yeah. Pretty good, pretty good chance that's going to happen. Yeah, and, and most of us, most of us leave it at mile twelve, <laughs> and, then, and then we're just running on fumes the rest of the way. But yeah, it's 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 ego and stubbornness. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it is ego, and one of my one of my favorite books from you know my favorite author Ryan Holiday he has a book called Ego Is the Enemy, mm. and it just and it just talks about how many times and how ego affects so many decisions that you make and so many things that you say and so many actions and reactions and how it's so much based on, you know, your, your ego. And I mean, we always think of, you know, when you hear ego, you think of like bravado and, and the pompous guy usually doing this and that when it, it rears its head in so many forms. Um, you know, especially like your inner ego in terms of like when you're out racing, it's just like, I know that what I'm about to do is just absolutely stupid and it's probably going to ruin my race here i go gearing down throttle down (laughs) and you do it anyway and then you think like why the did i do that you know which is obviously like the the case of most of our lives when we look back on things we shouldn't have done but it is it's just it it can take over your mind and, and it's just so so many thoughts and feelings and and i think a lot of it honestly is insecurities um without because we we have to, we have such a fear of trusting the end result will be what we want it to be instead of we just want to jump to it and try and force it and try to make it and and it, it is their ego plays a gigantic probably the largest part 
in something we touched on last podcast, 149, in, in the, the taper or the race self-sabotage. Mm. It's, it's, it's also the fragility of your ego that you would rather it not take an actual dent, whether it be private or public, that you're willing to fail on your own to prevent your ego from getting smashed. <laughs> from being so vulnerable. So I know what happens all the time. I mean, and people do it in training and people especially do it during races. Like they'll just do something and say, yeah, I just – listen, The one of the the most common thing you will hear after races where there were really – well, n- any race. I just – I think I overbiked. Yeah. And I just – I fell apart on the run. I overbiked. I overbiked. Yeah, my miles – I crushed the bike and the, I just think I overdid. I ended up walking the run. You know, congrats. It's not a, it's not a swim bike walk. It's, you know, you're supposed to, you know, at least try to put yourself in position to run. And that is 100% ego. But it's also, it's also the same mindset of going in with excuses. And you just, you, we do, we we work so hard at protecting our ego. And whether it's self sabotage or whether it's, you know, or you want to call it failing on purpose or doing whatever, it's just, it's the fragility of our ego that oftentimes never really allows us to fulfill anything because it's all about exerting your ego in times where you would make you feel more confident or it's in protecting your ego in times you feel like it may may be more fragile. And so it's really never an exploration of one's ability to perform. It's more about your uh, your obsessive controlling nature of how I want my ego to be perceived or how I can actually handle the emotional impact of having my ego just stomped on. Mm. Um, Damn it. That was good. We should probably stop there. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I just thought, uh, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, we could, I, I'm just, as you're saying that I was just kind of swirling in my head about through my race career and, you know, like trying to pick out ones that felt that way to the point where, you know, I more enjoyed them rather than, um, you know, 10, ten of the way into the run. I was, I was just cursing myself for even being in this sport. And <laughs> well, because, you know, you've been there. Oh, I did. I've been there. Been there. Uh, but there's yep. been certain times when, uh, and and frankly, it's been on you know usually on Olympics when I when I start feeling that sort of jolt on the second half of the run where I'm like man I got something left and I'm gonna go, mm-hmm. and that is the best feeling, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I, how you get that in an Ironman is beyond me, but I know people have gotten it, and I and I and I suspect that it you know it comes back to what you're saying you know it's like you know you gotta pace yourself and you gotta be patient on the bike and you gotta be patient. In, in the swim, for that matter, depending on your your fitness, and and then of course the first mm-hmm. half of the run. I mean, how hard is that, man, to come out with your guns not blazing on the run? <laughs> you know, it's like, yep, it's like just tuck those babies in the holster and just uh, you know, wait for the wait for the real villain to show up later. Yeah, it's like the it's like the guy that you know the hothead that rolls in, you know. <clears throat> a hot hen that rolls into a, you know, some kind of a movie scene with like two shotguns and a, you know, um, Uzi or whatever, and just start blazing shots everywhere, and you know he misses everything and ends up shooting himself, and then you got the guy that's like way, way far away, strategically with one shot and a sniper, mm-hmm. and just takes out his target with one shot, you know, and, and there's just there's that's 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 real racing too, you know, you got the athlete that's cerebral and confident in their approach. That will take things all the way down to the end, and then finally fires one shot when it's needed most, and then bam, it's over. Then you've got the one that, that wants to, you know, swim over top of you in the swim and kick you in transition and blow by you on the bike, and then you see him at mile one walking on the run, and that's him. You know, it's it's, it's usually him. You know, mm-hmm. we're the worst. Um, well, that's racing but, uh, your shape too. You know, um, that that's kind of that difference between. You know, and I've raced that way, and what happens is you get, you know, you get done with that race, and then you're done, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's over, you know. It's like, that's a one-and-done mentality, 
and you're not in it for the long haul uh, because you can do it, you know, and sometimes you get lucky and, you know, you can summons the deep, deep, deep energy that's uh, down in your inside your soul, but it <laughs> like it'll crush you, you know, mm-hmm. um, and that it is, it's, it's just got to be the ego, right? I mean, it's like, what else it is can push you to that level to that limit just to do something that you had this um maybe unrealistic goal in your head and just try to pull it out of your hat and instead of like all right well i'm not quite there yet you know there's always next race there's always next year there's you know just keep moving in that direction and that's why we quit everything you know that's why i Yep. You know, I decide I'm going to paint my house and I decide I'm going to paint it all in like one day, you know, every room. And then it's like, (laughs) then you don't want to paint again for, you know, six years. Exactly. It's it's kind of the same thing. Uh, Yeah, man, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go crazy. And that's just like the, the analogy of everything, you know. It's like I'm all in on this thing. You know, people find something new in their life, and use, and then it can be triathlon, and we know that feeling. It's like they're all in, all in, over the top, and then they go over the top, and it's really hard to keep coming back, and then it becomes a challenge, you know, um, a, a chore and not a love. Are you there? And you got to love it, or at least you should love it. Yeah, I mean that's how you build a passion. I think is it. Uh, yeah, and, and you got to regulate. You know, to be honest, it. Yeah, and to be honest, like the term "over the top" means once you get over the top, you're going down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're 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 ascending, and then all of a sudden you're over the top, so now you're descending. So you know, it's, you should always be trying to go up. So, but yeah, it's a it's a fine line between that. You know that 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 not having a fear of failing and really putting it on the line, and you know just over. You know, it's uh, and just overdoing it on purpose um, because you're afraid of what you know your ego might, you know, because you you want to give yourself you want to have that lie to yourself that yeah, but I just I didn't, you know, I just shouldn't have done this, and so you just you always it's yeah it's it's ego it's stubborn it's hard uh, we all have it whether you want to admit it or not. Um, you see this it in plays team a, sports. Plays a part in everything. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, some of the best teams in the, in professional sports, you can kind of see them. I mean, you know, people get mad at like LeBron or whatever for kind of quote unquote taking a game off or loafing or not, you know, going all out during an eighty-two game season. But you know, he's got his eye on the prize, man. He's a uh, they they pace themselves throughout the season, and I think pacing is is the operative word here is a you know it's all microcosm within training or in the race itself and everything else like that because you've got a job to do at the end of that season at the end of that race Mm. yep and you have to you know you want to have you know your best come out at the end and how do you do that that's not by you know painting every room in the house in one day you know that last room is going to get sloppy (laughs) yeah it's not by it's not by playing 48 minutes every game in the regular season. So you yeah, had nothing left for the playoffs. I mean, the, the swim is the, the preseason, the bike is the regular season and the run is the playoffs. Yeah. That's a good way. Ooh. Yeah. But that's it. You know, everybody, you know, as fans, we want, we can't tolerate that dude not playing defense in game 37, you know, but he's probably like, you mm-hmm. know what? we got this game. I'm not going to like, you know, prove anything right now. I gotta prove it yeah, in game yeah. seven. Beat you. beat you in the regular season, man. Beat you in the regular season. Who beat you in the regular season? You're like, yeah, well, now you're sitting at home on the couch and we're in the playoffs. We're playing for a title. Where are you again? Oh, that's right. You're watching from your couch. Holler. Yeah, exactly. And same thing. You know, same thing that goes on the for, on the for a triathlon, swim, bike, run. I like that's that. It. Playoffs of the run. Playoffs of the run. All right. The, so. that, that, Maybe that's a good title for the the podcast, the playoff run. The playoff run. Okay, I'll think about that. Yeah, you already vetoed it. I can tell by the tone of your voice. No, no, no. I really like it. I just I think it needs to uh, articulate what you said a little bit clearer. Oh yeah, I'm not good at that part. You're good at that part. I don't know if I am or not. <laughs> it's just like 
It's like uh, hey, well, well, over 150 podcasts. You've done a good job. So hooky um, title. No, yeah, no. That's right. You just. Uh, I mean, no. honestly, well, this is like I don't know, 50 minutes in again, and we're sitting here telling people that you know you never know really what you're going to get, and it's not going to be some coherent list of something. It's just going to be a conversation about triathlon that happens to produce hopefully some thought-provoking moments that's right uh, and hopefully this one <clears throat> my hotspot bill for my uh, wireless won't have a comma in it um but yeah, I, once if again, it does it does on yeah. trustingiron.com there's a pledge tab you can help yeah uh, Supplement. I'm help cover the uh, <laughs> cover this hotspot bill. It'd be great. But no, if uh, thanks again for listening, and, and we appreciate it all. We will be. Uh, oh, and again, if you if you want to check out all things uh, Crushing Iron, you can go to our website crushingiron.com and check out coaching, training plans, uh, training camp. Camps. We have swim and triathlon camps coming up here in like the next two weeks. Uh, we have some gear, hats, visors, and uh, swim analysis blog race videos, tribute videos, you name it, it's there. And then if you are on Facebook and want to be part of the conversation, you can always search for our group, Crushing Iron Group, on Facebook, and we will let you in. And we've had a lot of uh, awesome people introduce themselves over the last few days, so it's always good to hear from them and, and you know somewhat virtually meet new faces. And uh, we, uh, uh, we appreciate that. And... Um, Keep listening, and next week we will come from you uh, once from Nashville and maybe once from uh, on the road in Texas. Oh, Texas. The Crushing Iron Podcast hits the road. Yeah, maybe we can do one on our road trip when we start on Thursday. We can just go live from the car. That's what I was thinking. Live? Seriously? Live from the car? Oh, I'm in. It'll help pass the time. We'll just drive down the road in headsets. A 12-hour podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys ready for that? A 12-hour yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, we will definitely run. Should out we of pull off for coffee here? Yeah, let's let's <laughs> let's uh, let's get something to eat. I'm starving, truck, and then just truck, like truck let it roll. Stop commercial number four. Yeah, we'll just do a we'll do a Facebook Live 12 hours from live from the car on the way to Texas on Thursday. Oh man, that's a way to yeah. really boost the numbers. Dash camera. <laughs> Um, you got, okay. You got carpool karaoke. Now we're going to do carpool carpool podcast. So we're uh, we're coming. We're coming to compete. Man. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go something. see if I can get my car out of the garage. Um, since the electricity is out. So. Oh, you can do it. Yeah, I know. I got to do old school manually. So I I use uh, that as an excuse for being late to work once, and it did not. Because yeah. I, I thought it was real. I'm, I'm right stuck now. in the garage, but there's a way. And. Uh, you know, it was just one of many excuses oh, that I tried to get out of corporate shame, America. Uh, okay, good luck with that. Thanks for listening, everybody. And remember... Thanks, man. One size training doesn't fit all. That's right. Talk to you soon, man. All right, buddy. Bye-bye. <laughs>